Hey everybody, I'm the Drink Pro. Today we're reviewing Blom Brothers Old Fangled Nodder. What's up everybody, Kyle the Drink Pro here with you yet again. Thank you so much for liking this video, commenting your thoughts, and sharing it with your friends. And if you really like my content, please consider subscribing. I just got to 900 subscribers, I'm really excited about it, and I'm hoping to get to 1,000 here very soon. There's gonna be a fun giveaway as soon as I do. Now this July, we are continuing my sourced whiskey series where I review various different whiskeys that are sourced from larger distilleries. Some of them disclose this information, some of them do not. Some are actually contractually forbidden from doing so. But I wanted to do this to talk about the fact that so many different brands out there actually are made by the same few people. Uh, in fact, one of those that's pretty common right now is the Costco brand. Kirkland's has now been sourcing bourbon from Barton. But today we're staying back home again in Indiana with Blom Brothers Old Fangled Nodder. Now, Old Fangled Nodder is sourced from MGP, Midwest Grain Products. As I've said before, MGP is one of the largest distilleries in the world and one of the most common sources. If you see Lawrenceburg, Indiana on a bottle, chances are it's from MGP. Old Fangled Nodder is actually being blended by the Blom Brothers. They buy seven-year-old MGP, they let it age for a little bit longer, and then they blend them together to create their own concoction. Mike and Matt Blom started their distillery in 2013 in Galena, Illinois. I think I'm saying that right. And they wanted to have a bourbon product early on. So before they even opened their distillery, they started buying the seven-year-old MGP. Now the Blom brothers will be the first ones to tell you that Old Fangled Nodder is not their distillate, but they do make a bourbon along with gin, vodka, and an absinthe. But today we are reviewing the Old Fangled Nodder. Now this is a 12-year-old product. They also have a 10-year product. And I know at least one release was 13 years old, although it was labeled 12. All I can tell you is the label on this particular bottle says it is 12 years old. Old. It's non-chill filtered, it's 58.6% alcohol, and it's cast strength. So we're going to give it a try. Now, I don't know which mash bill this is. I've talked about before the fact that MGP has several different mash bills, but I've heard speculation that this is the 60364 high rye mash bill. 60% corn, 36% rye, 4% malted barley. That's a very common sourced mash bill from MGP, but I'm not certain about that. That is not being disclosed. By the way, Drink Pro glasses are available at thedrinkpro at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. But what I do know is that a bottle of this is around $90 MSRP, and it's pretty hard to get your hands on. I mean, a lot of people line up outside the distillery on a regular basis when they do these releases. Now, I want to make sure that I thank Mark Goldman for providing me with this sample. Cheers, Mark. And I realized that I forgot to thank Mr. Anonymous last week for the Peg Leg Porker sample. So we're going to run the footage. Thank you, Mr. Anonymous. All right, that felt like a ton of preamble. Let's get into this whiskey. Ooh, okay, it's actually rather grain forward on the nose, at least for me. I get a lot of light fruit. Uh, maybe raspberry, strawberry. But it's pretty subtle because there's this distinct ethanol burn behind it. So you get that sort of Lysol, uh, lemon, and that can kind of rub people the wrong way, but I don't think it's a bad smell. It's subtle enough that it's not punching you in the face. It doesn't feel like you're smelling straight ethanol, but it has a little bit of that cleaning product background vibe, and then into the foreground comes this subtle berry note. There's also an interesting funk to it that I'm having trouble placing. Maybe it's a light leather, definitely getting a white chocolate, and a little bit of baker's chocolate too. It's got a lot of interesting creamy notes on the nose. And to me, I don't get a lot of creaminess often alongside berries. So that's a rather unique note, especially for MGP. Now, if you watch my recent live stream, I tasted this and didn't think it was too impressive, but I didn't really spend much time on the nose. And when you taste a bunch of things beforehand, then your palate is going to be very different from trying something fresh like I am today. This is a really interesting nose. I'm almost getting like autumn leaves and like fresh cut pine. There's a lot going on in here. Maybe a sawdust vibe. I get really subtle boiled peanuts as well. The nuttiness 
is much more quiet than something like a Beam product, but it's it's distinct. It's in there. I understand also why somebody thought this was a high rye mash bill. I get a little bit of almost a spearmint vibe on the nose. I'm also getting a little bit of a tobacco, sort of like a fresh pipe tobacco, not something that's particularly aromatic and flavored, uh, and then maybe just a hint of cinnamon as well. And one thing I should also mention that I kind of just skipped over is this ooey gooey vanilla icing note that just is sprinkled on top. It's subtle, but it's throughout the entire nose. Every time I've smelled it, I get that and something else. I'm kind of impressed by this nose. This is a surprisingly complex nose, especially given that I tasted it before and wasn't super impressed. I kind of came in here with maybe lower expectations than I would have otherwise. I'm not the biggest MGP fanboy, although I do have a lot of their sourced products. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. Now, first taste of the day, when it starts with something that's 58.6% alcohol, it's gonna burn. I definitely get that Kentucky hug. It's burn all the way down your throat, sort of a warm feeling it settles in your chest. But there's also a pretty nice finish on this. It's definitely woody, uh, but not bitter. Uh, leaves some black pepper settling in my tongue and maybe some cinnamon, some spicy cinnamon. But uh, it's pretty subtle, it's pretty balanced as opposed to some of the oakier finishes that I've had, especially with a 12-year-old age statement that are a little bit more uh, rough around the edges. Let's go for a second taste and see if I can't get more on the front end of the palette. Yeah, I gotta say, for me, all MGP falls a little flat on the front end of the palette. It's fine, but if you want a front end, if you're like, I need that sweet, creamy something up front, you're just not gonna get it. I get a little bit of that oakiness that's in the finish. I don't really get hardly any sweetness. I don't really get hardly any fruit or citrus. The front end on this whiskey is super light. It's all back end focus. You get a wave of alcohol early into the mid palate, and then it falls by the wayside and you get these waves of oakiness, maybe just a hint of walnut, then the pepper, and then the cinnamon. It's such a weird experience for me because I have this so often with MGP where the nose will be beautiful and fruity and none of that fruit shows up for me on the palate, which is what I really want. I want to taste it more than I want to smell it, but that just almost never happens for me with MGP products. Yeah, I guess when I really spend some time with it, when I sit there and drink it again and again and again, I get just a hint, a hint of blueberry on the front of the palate and then that nuttiness comes in more prominent, so it goes slight blueberry, alcohol burn, nuttiness is very distinct, ooh, ooh, and then black pepper, and then you get some heat, now it's more like a chili instead of a cinnamon, and then that oakiness is very nice in the finish. Very well-rounded finish, and overall it's a very balanced pour, it's just missing for me a critical component. It's all subwoofer, this is a very nice subwoofer, but it doesn't have any high notes and that's a little disappointing. Now I don't do this enough, but I'm gonna add a couple of drops of water to this just to see if it opens it up at all, because I think it might, given how dense this is, it may actually be perfect with a little water added, which some people frown on that, and especially bourbon nerds, but I don't care. If it tastes good, drink it. It really dilutes the nose. Uh, the sweetness is still there, the creaminess is still there, but the complexity is really lost. Let's see if it's lost on the palate. It brings out the creaminess. With water added, it gets a little bit sweeter, a little bit creamier, but that really nice complex finish is totally lost and it leaves this sort of bitter taste. The oakiness and the pepper and the cinnamon are all jumbled together. So you're sacrificing a really beautiful finish for a mediocre mid palate and start of the palate. Would not recommend this with water, even though it's pretty high proof. Overall, I think it's a good pour. It's not my particular profile, but if you love an oaky finish and not a bitter finish, mind you, but you love the flavor of oak, you love that development of a mid palate into the finish from the walnut into the cinnamon, into the pepper, into the oak, this is gonna be a great pour for you. At $90, I would probably pick one up to have it on the shelf. Um, I would sip it from time to time but it would mostly be something I would be sharing with friends probably and trading pours of. I don't think this would be a go-to bourbon for me. That said, I do think it's very good and it's a good example of what MGB can do and it's a good example of what blenders can do with MGP products. So 
I'm going to finish this pour and maybe have a little bit more because I got a little bit left in the sample bottle. You all keep drinking like professionals. Cheers.